Hey, this is Ronja Kaminski from the Pinpricks. Greetings from Germany, and you are listening to the Freeform Rock Podcast. <laughs> You are listening to the Free Form Rock Podcast with Mark Alden Taylor. Welcome to another edition of the Free Form Rock Out, man. What's up, Lee? Woo! How are you? This is Lee of the Free Form Rock Podcast with uh, Mark. We are the Spark. <laughs> Well, we're, I'm either, um, hey man, or uh, I don't know. I can't yeah. do voices right. I was trying to do Keanu Reeves. You mixed, did. I was trying to do Keanu Reeves mixed with Tommy Chong. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. You did your own mixture. That's cool. <laughs> Far out, man. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen that movie, it, Far Out Man, with his daughter, Ray um, Armstrong? No, but uh, but I've, 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 I've had times where... I was with someone, and I said, I didn't do that. And they go, yeah, you did. I went, <laughs> for a long time, because I didn't understand. Uh, man. And you, you ever seen uh, Cheech's solo movies? Um, no. You never seen Born in East L.A.? I might have seen One Minute. Uh, that's a funny movie. It also has Paul Rodriguez in there. You know Paul R Rodriguez? I know of him. I usually try to avoid him, but he might be good <laughs> He that. made a movie with that guy, the blonde kid from uh, Caddyshack. Well, he's older than I am. I can't remember the actor's name. Uh, called, the oh. Whoopi, called The Whoopi Boys. And I remember... I've heard of that. That movie was hilarious. They freaking... Paul Rodriguez is putting something in a turkey going... Wah, 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 like it's having sex. <laughs> I, I I I remember trying to avoid watching that movie. I might watch it now because I'm older. Have you ever seen DC Cab? No. That has Mr. T, uh, Gary Busey, freaking. Um, I've heard Rodriguez. of it, but I never saw it. Paul Rodriguez is in there also. That movie's fucking hilarious, man. Fucking... I usually avoid anything with Paul Rodriguez. But you know Gary Busey's in there, and it's a taxi cab company, dude. They're like, it's kind of like a police well, well, academy. well. That sounds cool because um, Gary Busey is interesting. He's he's in a group, believe uh, it or not. In that movie, he's a huge Elvis fan, like in real life. Uh, oh and, wow! And he gets his cab decked out with these huge speakers, and he's jamming Elvis, and the windows break. <laughs> like, fuck. you know what? I might decide. Soon we ought to do the the album with with him in in the group. It's it's a real rock group, and they did an album back in the sixties. Uh, you know, Kevin Bacon has a group called the Bacon Brothers, right? Uh, I might have heard of it. I have no idea how they sound. Yeah, they're they're kind of rock folky. <laughs> Huh, I might like them more than you do. Probably. They did a song called Tom Petty Shirt. You could cry on my Tom oh. Petty shirt. No, because it was a that, tribute. That... It's a tribute song to Tom Petty. It, it kind of sounds like I might not like them. You might. I'll, I'll find some videos and send them to you. They sound oh, okay. Oh, if you must. <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. Um, so, this, pol this, this uh, podcast, we do know politics, right? We do fucking no fucking politics. The only thing I want to yeah. say is, man, fucking be good to each other. Stop yeah. hating because somebody has a different opinion than you. Let's get together and be Americans. That's it. Yeah. Spread some I love. Spread love, not I hate, don't man. Care. I, I don't care whether a little bit of politics enters into it or not. But, but to me, politics, the only thing I'll say is that... Um, at least let things happen like like um don't be a bunch of jerks and crowding an area where your politicians can't come in to vote at least let them vote and and, and if you want to bitch 
do it at your own home in front of the barbecue in the beer party. No, I'm fine with people outside of the place. Just stay outside. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's it, man. Be nice. And we're not. Yeah. I'm just that, saying, that, man. That's the thing. I'm be a, nice, I, but also be smart and listen to good music. Listen, I'm a huge fucking conservative. I'm not far right. I do listen to some people on the left. I'm yeah. kind of in the middle. You know, I'll vote for a Democrat if I think they're the best person for the job. I think you're, you're like you're, you're like you you listen to what you believe in. That's I, what I think is good. I listen to you know you, you full shit. <laughs> it's like you you I mean I mean you you're not going to just vote for someone just because some asshole. Um, who lives next to you drinks the same beer you do. <laughs> I'm not going right? to, I never, yeah, I never vote along party lines, but I will never vote for a progressive. <laughs> Just let you, I'll vote for an independent. I'll vote. For That's who, why you don't like progressive rock. I now love, I understand. What are you talking about? My favorite genre is progressive rock. You are, you said you won't vote for a progressive. Progressive fucking politician. Well, well, I, well, 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 if he does a rock album, are you not going to review it? Uh, I review anything, man. As you can well, you, you, you review anything. You review kitty, kitty, cat, cat, chow, chow. <laughs> kitty, kitty, cat, cat, chow, chow. Okay, I'll find the, I'll find the fucking kitty, cat, chow album. <laughs> You'll be reviewing the kitty, cat, chow album. Well, there's a group called Kitty. Oh... Oh, I I don't know if I like them or not. It's a female metal band. You should like them. You like females. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, Kitty. I didn't mean to insult you. Man, you put me on the spot. No, I put me on the... Uh, never mind. There's a lot Hi, of weird Mark. groups, man. With How are you doing today? You ever heard of the Donnas? That's a whole female uh, rock group. Yeah, yeah, I know them. Yeah, I know them. I'm doing great, man. I just wanted people to be good to each other. Stop fighting. Who cares if this yeah. person likes X and you like Y? Find something in the middle of X and Y. You know, freaking yeah. YX or whatever. Yeah. Just... just yeah. Treat people as humans, yeah. not treating people as assholes. And 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 I love Bruce Springsteen. I don't care for his politics, but on a live album, you know what he said? He said, uh, any blind faith, blind faith in any politician or anyone will get you killed. And I 100% agree with that statement. I, well, I have to say... I like his politics more than his music, but I have nothing against him. That's all I want to say. But wasn't that a great quote? quote? Blind faith in anything or any any one will, politician will get you killed, and any leaders. Well, well, um, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, um, it, it, I know what he means, but, but, but one thing I want to say about Springsteen: this isn't necessarily political. This is just, he spent a lot of time um, hitchhiking with people, and then they told him their stories. And that's how he got a lot of the stories for his albums. It wasn't based upon a lot of stuff that he experienced. He used stories of other people, so he was kind of like a storyteller. So, you know... That's that's cool, you know. <laughs> that's all I want to say. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, um, I I like I like his album "Born in the USA." I think that's his best album. You know why that's his best album? Wait. Forget "Born to Run." "Born to Run" is okay, but "Born in the USA" is a good album. You that's know, all I. You know why that's you. his best album? Why they finally figured out how to record him and the band. To sound live in the studio. Well, hey, I ain't going to argue about that. It's it's a fucking great album, man. It is a fucking great album. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. If I saw you in person, we'd hug 
and say brotherly love to all. You know what else was a great album by him with E Street Band? The Rising. Uh, the Rising. I have to listen to that then. Yeah. If I, that so sounds similar or good, I'll still I'll Hey man, I I um like a lot of what he did back in the early days. I'm 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 not the biggest Springsteen fan in all, but I like some of his stuff and I'll listen to The Rising. 1975 to 1985 live album set by Springsteen. One of the huh. best live sets I've ever heard in my life. So it's not a studio album. No, it's live from all over his career, starting from 75 to 85. Probably a 85. big box set, right? Yep, five records, five vinyls. Damn it, man. You you, 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 you almost tricked me. Why? Because I want to hear a whole album. I didn't want to hear a whole box set. But... Well, I told you to listen to The Rising. That's not a box set. That's what... Oh. What do you? That's what I thought you said. No, I said listen to 1975 to 1985 live box set by Springsteen. The Rising was a different album. That's a oh, single album. Well, okay. Well, I I was hoping that so. No, because after Born in the USA, they learned how to record themselves in the studio. And as so, new... I'll listen to The Rising, but I'll listen to some of the of the of the um. Of the live, but but I mean I, I I thought that you were saying that the rising was the live stuff. That's why no, I said no, that. No, no, the rising is okay. the studio album. Uh, so either you or me are dumb, or or neither of us are dumb. We're just we're just so ingrained in what we're thinking that we can't, or 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 I'm or I'm just I don't know. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, live, I was just talking about how he's live, and if you want to hear a great live set by Springsteen, get 74 to 85. Oh, yeah. Well, Rosarita is a good song live. Oh, Rosarita, Rosarita on this fucking album rules. I think it's the one that MTV showed a lot. You know, the live one in the club. Well, then, hey, man, I'll listen to it. So I apologize to you, Mark. And he tells... Kissy, kissy, kiss, kiss. You're good. He tells some great stories in there. It's like... He talks about, before he goes into a song, he talks about how he got a draft notice for Vietnam, right? Yeah. And But before that, he was in a big motorcycle accident. His dad yeah. came in. He, he, dad always argued with him, cut that hair, cut that hair, be a man, cut that hair. So he got in a motorcycle accident. He was <laughs> laid up in a hospital bed. His dad brought a barber in and cut his hair. Oh. And then he got his draft notice. And his dad would always tell him, you know what, son? The army will get you and make a man out of you. Just wait. You'll go to the army. It'll make a man out of you, son. Yeah. You need to go to the army. So he got his draft notice, and he went out with his friends for the weekend to maybe have a last hurrah Yeah. before he was getting his test. So he got his test, and then he came home, and his dad said, where have you been, son? Sitting at the kitchen table, and he goes, I got my draft notice and went to take my physical. He says, so what happened? Uh, I failed. And his dad goes, that's good, son. Oh, hi, that's, you know what? That reminds me of something that I, I, I might want to um, save it for when we do another. No, I'll tell you really quick. My dad, for a while, he was a longshoreman. And what happened was his dad and it worked as a longshoreman too. And my dad was the one who was the boss of that day. And and this was the first time that he worked with his dad on the longshoreman thing. And so he's telling his dad, you know, what to do. And his dad was acting all angry, like, oh, you stop it. Be quiet or that shut up or I, I don't want to hear you. And so my dad got so angry he he went and he punched his dad out. Before that, his dad was the only one who could punch people out. If someone tapped him on the shoulder, his dad, his dad would go bang and punch him out and then go, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to punch you out. I'm just, I don't like people touching me. Let me buy you a drink. 
So my dad was the only guy who was able to knock his dad out. But he went, oh my God, I just knocked my dad out. What the fuck? <laughs> so he went over to him and he said, dad, are you okay? And his dad went, that's my boy. <laughs> he was proud of him. <laughs> yeah. Knocking the old man out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, Lee, have you ever been into a fight? You don't seem like a person who would get into a fisticuffs. I don't. Now, back in high school, there were times in which I had to a little bit. But, but yeah, ordinarily, no. Um, but, but, but one time I was um, so, you know, angry that I chased after a guy and then he ran and then later in the classroom he went and he put me down on the desk and when you see i got you down so if i really wanted to hurt you i could but i don't want to because i like you so you know but i mean i i i didn't like fighting i don't like fighting either when i was a kid dude i didn't fight at all i just get on yeah. the ground and let them kick me and then get up and go back to class yeah, I, yeah. I I was I was the one who would just run, or or I or I, or I would talk to them and 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 make sure that they didn't want to fight me. That's how I was. Yeah, that, that's how I I tried not to get people to fight me. But the thing is, I'm yeah. quiet. Didn't have many friends, so I was the one they came yeah. after. It was just let's get our uh, bullying out today. There's Mark. It, get him. <laughs> yeah, if, if 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 you know like those um, nerdy guys, the guys who wore the horn rim glasses, who, um, you know, had suitcases and we were you you know like the nerdy guys who were in classical stuff or the chess club. You know what I mean? Those nerdy types who went, "Hey, teacher, how are you?" You know what I mean? That wasn't me, dude. I no, nerdy. no, no, no. Do you <laughs> know who they... on. No, no. Do you know who I mean? No, because I got bullied so much, I didn't notice what's going on around me. <laughs> so... But 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 I mean, did, did did you ever see kids who had like glasses who looked like they were scared of everything and they ran? And they no, because more all scared... I did was go from one class to another. Uh, didn't pay attention much because I hated the teachers. But. But but okay. School was let's oblivious say, to me. I do. I, I have no good memories of school. People, <laughs> people in Revenge of the Nerds. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. I know they that. They used to pick on me too. Fuckers. You know what I mean? I I, I I was worse. Girls used to beat me up. Dude, in school, I have no good memories of being in school except when I was in a private. Christian school that my grandpa put me into when I lived in Huntington Beach with my mom and my stepdad. They got a divorce and I got taken out of there and went to public school. But in that private school, dude, I was the fucking leader. I told people what to do. I didn't pick on anybody. I left them alone. I brought, I tried to be friends with Man. everybody. But I was the leader. All the girls hung around me. I had all these girls' phone numbers. I wish I fucking man, I wish I was in private school now. And then when I got out of private school, went to public, I was a fucking soccer ball. I was kicked around and fucking all the girls made fun of me. But when I was a king in fucking Christian private school. You know what I mean? It's like intelligence wins over. So it's like, fuck these assholes. No, but you I know? was a fucking king. And then I went to private, public school and I was fucking the pop. Yeah, I, I only went to... to public school i mean i i um i have a whole big fucking story about it but i mean it's not for now all right man let's uh so we talked about how our week was and how our life was and how springsteen yeah. how we like springsteen and we haven't done a pod one podcast on bruce yet which we need to yeah. start changing that because i like a lot of his up i saw him on the 87 tunnel of love tour so that was really good. Open stage. The E Street Band was there. I was first row back at the concert of the stage. And Bruce had always come back with his acoustic guitar and play to us. And it was like over a three-hour concert. And it's fucking wow. my top two, dude. Top two concerts of all time. Fucking ruled. 
All right, well, let's get into this album uh, that we that yeah. Lee picked today. Finally, we're doing a Frank Zappa album, Ship Arriving Too Late to Save a Drowning Witch. What a title, Lee, and why did you pick this one? I picked this one because, coincidentally, we were talking about high school. This is an album that we would hear in high school. Or there's a certain song we heard back in high school. I actually would get the album. And my friends and stuff who would visit me, they would hear the album and I played it for them. But, yeah. This was... Um, I'm not going to say it's a normal album, because it isn't. But it did have one song on it with KFRC back in California was like the mainstream AM radio station at that time and they had Dr. Donald D. Rose and I think he said we're gonna play Frank Zappa on AM radio ain't that totally trippy but here we go and they would play the song and the actual album I was trying to think of the right album to do I thought even though people might have heard that one song which is a good song maybe a lot of people still haven't heard the whole album and 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 I thought it's it's there was another album that Frank Zappa did which is something that different people on different podcasts say is his best album. And I won't disagree, but I will say that to me, this album needs to be recognized too, because if people only listen to one album by a guy who's done tons of albums, then that's, you know, they need to hear a little bit more than just one. So I, I picked one from when I grew up because, hey, why not? Dang, and Steve Vai was on this album too with uh, Frank. Wow. Oh, cool, man. I love Steve Vai. You ever heard Flexible by Steve Vai? That's a great album. Oh, my God. Um, I, I was thinking about doing that. Cool. We haven't done an instrumental album yet. That'd be awesome. Um, this is a. Uh, I like Frank Zappa, and I got into Frank Zappa from the great Wadzilla, yeah. Yeah. Ian Watley, because I asked him, because he's always talking about Frank Zappa. So I asked him, hey, uh, what album should I get Bye Bye Frank that I could get into that I don't know, or I don't know really any of Frank except Valley Girl, which is on this album. Uh, he goes yeah. by Zoot Allurus. Yeah. Well, allures. Allures. My bad. But no, no, no. Um, it's it's totally okay, because um, just like in a in this one sitcom, the guy went Frank John is Frank John is, and the guy went it's Frank Jones. <laughs> you know, but but I mean, it's it's all good. But anyway, yeah. Um. Um. It's that that was the album that I was referring to as the one that um, that was the first album that I heard of him. And it's good, but everyone's going to go to that album because that album is the one that the great whoever, you know, mentioned or this or that. They're not going to look into any of Frank Zappa's other work. So that's partly why I wanted to do this album because I think that this album has stuff that is equal and trippy to that album. Yeah, man, because you know what, Lee? We have something in common. Uh, that, yeah. Uh, Zoot, Allure, yeah. Zoot Allures was the first album I heard by him, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I I never owned it. I I got it out of the library, and I heard it, so, but I never actually owned it. Would you believe I never owned an Ozzy Osbourne solo album? I've heard them because 
one of my friends. Um, I used to listen to Ozzy albums at his place because he had Blizzard of Oz, Diary of a Man Man, and Speak of the Devil. But I never owned an Ozzy album ever. Yeah, I just want to get into this because I don't know when we're going to do another Zap album. But this guy was put on the parents, re, uh, the PMRC back in the 80s, you know, when they were yeah. saying these songs are lewd, crude, and rude. They yeah, put, well, they what, are, but they, but I mean, that's what makes them good. But they put one of his songs on the list, The Dirty Dozen or something, and it was an instrumental. <laughs> Well, wow, that's dumb. <laughs> Isn't it? And, and Zappa was at the hearing with D. Schneider from Twisted Sister. And in a statement, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Al Gore on the subject of content of certain recordings and suggestions that recording packages be labeled to provide warning pers perspective purchasers of sexually experienced or potential offensive comment. During his statement, Zappa stated, The PMRC proposal's ill-conceived piece of nonsense which fails to deliver any re real benefits to the children infringes the civil liberties of people who are not children and promises to keep the court busy for years de dealing with the interpretation <laughs> and enforcement problems inherent to the proposal's design. <laughs> wow. Fuck that he's... sounds like you didn't know what you were talking about and you only read from a script. I'm I... kidding with you. Ah, whatever. I did read it because I... No. I can't say I didn't memorize his. What no, he said. no, no, no. I it, no, no. It's 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 okay. Um, with me, I, I I think that it's it's a shame that these artists had to do that because um, I um, you know that's that's partly why I I wouldn't vote for Gore because Gore's wife Tipper Gore was part of the PMRC. Yeah. And 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 and, and I just um um screw that shit. It has this whole letter here where he says the PMRC, PMRC has a lot of nerve to ask for money. They're already well-funded, well-connected, and seem to have the entire news media in their back pocket. This mailing, yeah. all legal fees, phone bills, and travel costs connected with fighting this issue have been paid out of profits from Barking Pumpkin record sales from the Barfield yeah. Wheel mail order, mail order funds. Thank you. We are buying these items. Without your orders, without the orders you've already placed, the real opposing view in this issue would never be heard. <laughs> yeah, Barking Pumpkin was Frank Zappa's label. Yeah, I, I, I like this one. He says right here, okay, it's up to you now. Don't let, let ourselves yourselves down. Take some time and help protect your constitutional rights. You know how to use the phone. You know how to write letters. Make some noise about this issue. Use your imagination. Don't bend yeah. over for the wives of Big Brother. Thanks, Frank Zappa. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of remember that. Fuck it, dude. He's fucking awesome, man. He is. It's like his music is not something that everyone is into always. But, I mean, there's a lot of stuff he does that I like. Dude, he's like me. I don't like fucking big government. I don't like people making me bend over. Fuck that guy. Man, I, I, man um, I, I'd be interested to know if he liked the group, the United States of America. <laughs> man, <that's funny>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I might was... disagree I like, with I didn't... him, or he, or he might, he might slap my face and say, "Fuck you." This I... is the one time in which you can go to Tipper Gore because I slapped you with my velvet glove. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, man. Well, so let's get into this album. We get into the first track, No Not Now. What do you think of well, this Well, no, not now. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, that That's that's an interesting song. It's like he has these vocals that are not in tune at all. But, I mean, that's part of what he does. and 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 it's meant to be like this. 50s style of singing that's totally whacked out like woo sugar baby but instead hey sugar baby <laughs> and, 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 and he does it right no not now but the song is actually a, 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 a pretty interesting song and it to me it's it's a pretty good interesting first song and i like it yeah and uh this is a 
this song is cool and funny. Well, I like what he said. Uh, America, I never promised you a rose garden. I said, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> This is America. <laughs> no, it says, this is America. Yeah. I never promised you a rose garden. And it, it sounds like ads that the guys do spoken word to. It's like fucking... And he's putting all this pop yeah. pop culture into a song. You know? Yeah. Like sayings, like off the... off the. He's making sayings up himself, but using original sayings to add to it. It's just weird. Uh, I, I like it. This is a great song, and the music is really fucking good. Yeah. And then we get to the next song, the big hit off this album, Valley Girl, with his daughter, uh, Moon Unit Zappa. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to, you pick this track. So here it is, yeah. Valley Girl by Frank Zappa on the Freeform Rock Podcast. Valley Girl, she's a valley girl. Are you into SM? I go, oh, right. Could you, like, just picture me in, a, like, a leather teddy? Yeah, right. Hurt me, hurt me. I'm sure, no way. <laughs> he was, like, freaking me out. He called me a beastie. That's just, like, he's totally blitzed. He goes, like, bag your face, I'm sure. <laughs> Like, those things that, like, stick in your mouth are so gross. You gotta get saliva all over them. 
but like, I don't know, it's gonna be cool, you know, if I can like see my smile, it'll be like really cool, but my like teeth are like too small, but no biggie, so awesome, it's like too real, you know, well I'm not like really ugly or anything, it's just like, I don't know, <gasps> you know me, I'm like into the, like the clean stuff, like Pac-Man and like, I don't know, like, my mother, like, makes me do the dishes, it's, like, so gross, like, all this stuff, like, sticks to the plate, and it's, like, it's, like, somebody else's food, you know, it's, like, grody, grody to the max, I'm sure, it's, like, really nauseating, like, bark out, gag me with the spoon, gross, I am sure, <laughs> totally. Okay, that was Valley Girl, why'd you pick this track, Lee? I picked it because... Even though it's the well-known song, it's still pretty damn good. And I remember it back in the day, and listening to it now, a lot of the comments that Moon is doing in the music are not really all that strange. It's just her voice is, and they're inflecting it as if it's strange. But... I would say that it's it's basically another commentary song of Frank Zappa, but musically, I like the rhythm of it. I like the music of it. I think it's a good song, and I think that uh, even though there are maybe other songs of his that match it as far as being possibly hit songs on the radio, I think that for its time... It's, it was a good party song, and I dig it. Oh, God, the lyrics are just so fucking 80s. But she's just talking. She's not singing. And he goes, there she goes. She just brought some bitching clothes, toss her head, and flips her head. She's got a whole bunch of nothing in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, where's the one I really liked? It's just, he was, like, freaking me out. He, like, called me bestie. That's because I like... He was totally blitzed. He goes like, bag your face. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm looking for the part where she talks about her mom making her do the dishes. <laughs> I like this yeah. one. Though. It goes, I go into this like salon, you know, and I wanted to get my like toenails done. And the lady goes, oh my God, your toenails are like so grody. It was yeah. really like embarrassing. She's like, oh my God. Like, bag those toenails. Like, I'm sure. She goes, uh, I don't know how if I could handle this, you know? I was, like, really embarrassed. <laughs> and then here's, yeah. the, here's the one I like. Like, my mother's, like, a total space cadet. She, like, makes me do the dishes and clean the cat box. <laughs> I'm sure that's, <laughs> like, gross. Barf out. Oh, my God. <laughs> it goes... <laughs> yeah, it... it the reason why I thought that it was kind of normal was because it reminds me of some of the stuff that I dealt with when I finally visited my biological family. And my, I'll tell you this, my uncle, he had this big, like, litter cat box thing that was for cat litter. And he made this stink face, like, oh, my God. And he opened it up, and he took out some vitamins that was in the box. And I went, why are your vitamins in this stinky cat box? And he said, I'll put them in something else later. And I went, um, are you going to put them in something else now? He went, no, I'll do it later. I went, well, why are you putting vitamins in this box that's so stinky that when you open it up, you feel like you're going to choke? He went, you don't understand. I'm going to put them in some else later. I went, well, why not now? He went, <laughs> because I'll do it later. Yeah. And that's that's true. And, and, and then she comes back to the mother. And this is like the end of the mother thing. He goes, like... My mother, like, makes me do dishes, and it's, like, so gross. Like, all that stuff, like, sticks to the plates, and it's, like, somebody else's food, you know? It's, like, grody, yeah. <laughs> grody to the max, I'm sure. It's, like, really nauseating. 
<laughs> I yeah. love that. Like, barf out, gag me with a spoon, gross, I'm sure. Totally. <laughs> She's like doing all the freaking Valley Girl yeah. talk at the end. That's fucking rules. Frank Zappa's yeah. a fucking genius. I wonder if his daughter really talked like that or he just made up the Valley Girl shit or he just heard it um, around town. Um, She apparently um told him how her friends had talked. So he invited her to do that. And so she got co credit with the song. Yeah, it's like I haven't talked about what I liked about it. It's classic 80s, Moon Rules. Love it. I wish I could be in the mind of this guy. He's sick and twisted, and I love this song. <laughs> Fucking Frank Zappa, man. He's a smart, yeah. smart cookie, man. Yeah, yeah. If you listen to other albums that I give you, you can become sick and twisted. So, hey. <laughs> More power to you, buddy. All right, then we get to the... either that or you'll be. I'm sick and twisted of Lee. <laughs> then we get to the uh, last song on side one, which is "I Come from Nowhere," which you picked, Lee. So here's "I Come from Nowhere" on the Freeform Rock Podcast. <laughs>
Okay, that was I Come From Nowhere. Why'd you pick this track, Lee? Because it's a good song. <laughs> and we come from nowhere. And we don't have any taste in music. And this is the best thing we can come up with. No, it's 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 a funny song. And I used to play for my friends. I would go listen to the guy singing. He's a really good singer. And then all of a sudden, this comes up and you go, what the hell? I used to joke around and do stuff with my friends just like I do with you. You know, I never stopped doing that. I, I've been turning people on to weird shit my whole life. And, and, and so I thought this is a good chance for me to, you know, show what this song is. And, and I, I just thought it was a fun song. And, and, um, you know, so I, um, I also like a lot of the instrumental parts as well. You know, I, I think it's a cool, cool song. Yeah, it's it's a great song. I like it. It's really cool, and it's got killer rhythm, yeah. and the drums are so fucking good. The guitar rips. Yeah. Fucking great. Fucking Frank Zappa was an underrated guitar player, man. Because um, I don't. He was well, really good. Unless that was Steve Vai, because he's credited as impossible guitar part. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's possible. Yeah. It's or a, impossible. You know, <laughs> who it's knows? Fuck, but, but it's got to be Steve Vai, man. Steve Vai is r rules, man. <laughs> I don't it, know. It, it, it could, but but either way, it's good guitar. Yeah, it's good guitar. And then we flip this bitch over and get to the longest song on the album, "Drowning Witch." What do you think about this one? I like it. I think it's um, it's it's long, of course, but I mean, it has a lot of interesting parts on it, and it's it it, it was too long for me to pick, but. I would say it's one of my favorites on here because it's it's so intricate. There's a lot of interesting stuff on here, and it's just this um, like you can just get back, drink a hell of a lot, lay on your couch, and if you have a wife or a maid or whoever you have says, "What the fuck is that?" You go. Shut up. Let me listen. And then, then they go, um, how much longer? You go, maybe in two days. Who the fuck cares? Let me listen. And then, and then, and then this song comes on and you're like, whoa, 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 Yeah, right on, man. That's so how I feel about it. I agree with you on everything you said. This song is fucking amazing. It, I was gonna pick this yeah. track, and I go, "Fuck, it's twelve minutes," and Lee's already yeah. picked some long ones. Yeah, and I go, uh, <laughs> "Oh yeah. God!" Well, that's why we had such a long beginning because we only have six tracks. So I wanted to make sure we had enough well, recording. Well, yeah, um, <laughs> that that's that's sort of why I I said a whole bunch of shit that doesn't matter too. <laughs> well, but I do anyway. So because the last album we did uh, uh, for. Uh, uh, I forgot the last week we did. It was like uh, the week after. I don't know. Whatever. We ever had six songs. We on did it. it. We, we we did an album. And we did an album. And we did a we and we we did a why. And we did a we and we did a why. And we did an album. And we did an album. And we did no. The last album. We, the last album we did. No. The Roy six, Wood. Six songs. We uh. It was pretty short. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's like, um. I. You know. So I. I. I'm sorry that I'm picking Elms with such small amounts of songs. It's just that <laughs> if the songs are good, they're good. Oh, I so agree oopsie. with that. Oopsie. Yeah, oopsie, oopsie. <laughs> All right, then we get to the next song, Envelopes. Here's the last. These are the two shortest songs on the album, the next two. What do you think yeah. of Envelopes? I like it. I almost picked that over... I come from nowhere because it was shorter, but I, um, at the last moment, I figured that the listeners needed to hear the vocals on I come from nowhere, but this song is pretty hot and it, it, it reminds me of some of the 
instrumental stuff that he does on other albums like Sleep Dirt and Studio 10 and stuff that's really, really interesting music. And, um, you know, um, when you hear the album, you hear the songs sort of like in this whole thing, almost like one song. But if you hear the one song separated, it's really, really good. And I, I think this is a good song. Yeah, this is a really good song. I like it. It's short, sweet, and it rocks. And then we get to the last song, which you picked. I love the title, Teenage Prostitute. Yeah. She goes over to do. All right, so here's Teenage Prostitute by Frank Zappa on the Freeform Rock Podcast. She's only 17. She's really sort of cute. She's working in the street. Okay, that was Teenage Prostitute. Why'd you pick this song, Lee? Because it is so good! <laughs> she does a really good job! She's a teenage prostitute! It's I, I like I like the vocals, I like the music, I think it's... It kind of reminds me of stuff that I would do, but I can't do it as well as him. But but if you like my music, now you kind of know a little bit of, how, of why I'm weird, because I like to be weird like that, but I, I did it. I didn't do the same. I, I didn't do this. I did it without knowing he did it. And then later on, I found out that he did it. But I was weird too. But, you know, hey man, Zappa and Gersman, you know, that would have worked. But I mean, this this is a fun song. And, 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 and I could see them on stage with the ladies singing and doing like the opera stuff. And then the, you know, some weird people in the background doing the dancing during the guitar solo and all that. I think it's a really cool song. Yeah, it is it is a fucking really cool song. And this is like killer riffs. This was Oingo Boingo before. You know. <laughs> I think they came out around, this album came out the same year as Oingo Boingo. But I, yeah, I this song... Maybe, maybe Oingo Boingo's first album came out before. 
Yeah, because this sounds a lot like something Danny Elfman would do in Oingo Boingo. Oh, uh, yeah. This rules short. I love the keyboards. Dang, fucking rules. And also, they played like a... Did they play a xylophone in this fucking album somewhere? Yeah, yeah. There's a fucking xylophone, and then the keyboards come in right after it, and I'm like, fucking hey, <laughs> rules. <laughs> and Lisa Propel did vocals on this song. Oh, that's cool. And uh, Moon Unit Zappa did, of course, Valley Girl. Steve Vai was yeah. a possible guitar parts. I thought the yeah. guy from uh, Missing Persons was going to be on drums on this, but he wasn't. I oh, guess he was on here mean, before. Um, Terry Bozio? Yeah, Terry Bozio. He was on Zoodlers. Yeah, he's really a fucking great drummer. Missing Persons yeah. does not show how great a drummer he is. And then he did like a, like yeah. a trio with somebody, didn't he? Yeah, with Steve Stevens and um, I think maybe um, Tony Levin, but I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, that was a good band too. Uh, man, he's a great drummer. He's one of my top five. I, I, forget, yeah. I forget about him, but then I hear him and I go, oh man, he's good. But I was hoping oh, yeah. he was on this album. I know he's on Zoot Allures and he's really good. I think this is when Missing yeah. Persons was starting now. So, yeah, yeah. So that was our uh, review of Frank Zappa, uh, Ship Arriving Too Late to Save a Drowning Witch, which I don't understand the title, but it's fucking cool. It uh, was because there was um, a bunch of different cue cards have you heard of mad libs yes i used to play yeah um there was another thing where it's like shapes like maybe if you know the album cover it shows a line and a triangle and uh like a rectangle and and they say what do you think of it and 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 so the triangle is supposed to be the witch who is drowning in the sea which is the straight line and then the ship is supposed to be um the rectangle or something you know okay well this album i think it got to 23 because of valley girl right probably people bought uh, this probably album. people bought this album for valley girl and then heard the other songs and go what the fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> if they didn't know who yeah. frank zappa was they just bought it because oh god i love valley girl let's go check it out oh my god what the fuck is this 12 minute song oh what my, the hell oh, oh my god, god. Gang, me with totally a spoon. gang me with a spoon i don't like this song let's this... play it again because my neighbors are looking <laughs> it's like totally totally yeah. it's not tubular man this album is yeah. not tubular yeah. it's, it's not a <laughs> radical album this album is not yeah. rad but I like Valley Girl Valley Girl kicks ass man I should have just bought yeah. the single like everybody else did and went to number 12 on the mainstream rock charts yeah. and pop single number 32 <laughs> yeah but I mean um, in, in my neighborhood though I mean um, my friends I would play the actual album for them so you know they got to hear it anyway. I I was like the tyrant of of the neighborhood, but but no, I mean people did hear you know the album where I was because this was before um, there was any kind of MTV or any kind of idea of what normal is. This is where you just you just dealt with what you dealt. with. And, and so this, this, um, well, I, I was also in my own world. I'm like, fuck you, whoever you are, if you don't want to hear no, not now, I'm going to play no, not now. I'm going to play yes, right now. <laughs> kind of like that, you know? That's funny. But I know probably why this album hit the top 40. It's because of probably Valley Girl. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh my God, I, I, this like song speaks to me, man. <laughs> yeah, Tell and then, and I decided yeah, and I decided to do it because even though a lot of people know that song, they don't know the album. They might listen to Zoodlers because someone on, you know, somewhere said it's their best. But, but I think this album is as good. Yeah, it's a great album. I need to hear more Zappa albums. This is like the second one. I didn't get into. Yeah, there, there's another one that I I like a lot too. But it's an instrumental, and it was um, the songs were um, thought of like like the songs are picked by Warner Brothers, and and they were like 
so it, it wasn't in the order that Zappa wanted. So it's it, but but it, it it is an official release. But later we can maybe do that one sometime. All right, and then we get to our tracks of the week, and you pick Spirit, Dream yeah. Within a Dream. Yeah, man. And then since Zappa is like just as weird as Oingo Boingo, I picked yeah. Running on a Treadmill by Oingo Boingo. Oh. And then uh, Lee's song of the week is Street <laughs> Street it's, Ba 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 song it's, number one. It's, it's, it's a song from the street called Ba 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 Ba, and it's the first one. It's me going ba 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 ba. So I figure that why not do a do a weird one by me. That's cool. Yeah, that's why I picked the weird weird uh, uh -huh. song. But you picked a, like a rock band. <laughs> I. Uh, but I picked a weird song by them. Oh, okay, cool. I don't know it. I need to listen to it. I didn't uh, to yeah, it. yeah. And you, you never listen. But anyway, I listen to everything good. you send me, liar. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Yeah, I'm kidding. No, I mean, um, I just decided that I didn't want to be too weird. All right, and then uh, that's it for the Frank Zappa episode. Hopefully, we have some more. Um future uh we'll do tony bennett later if you want tony bennett <laughs> yeah I, I like tony bennett i like frank sinatra and dean martin but that's not I, rock man yeah <laughs> unless oh, we do the 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 one where uh uh frank sinatra <laughs> did songs with the rock stars like bono oh no <laughs> all right so that's uh that's our podcast for the ship arriving too late to save the a drowning witch. And you know what to do, Lee? It's that time. It's the time that everybody waits for to get rid of us. Except you got to listen to the tracks of the week. Uh, say goodbye, Lee. I'm not a teenage prostitute. But goodbye, everybody.
You have just listened to the Freeform Rock Podcast. All music played on the Freeform Rock Podcast belongs to its owner. If you like it, go out and buy it. Get your music on Amazon, iTunes, or at your local record store. Support what you love. Support the artist by seeing them live. Purchase their music. The Freeform Rock Podcast is not affiliated with any of the artists or music that we play. Thank you for listening to the Freeform Rock Podcast. 
We'll see you on the next episode. Until next time, stay free and rock on.